the heart master, Xinju, the pericardium channel, arises at the center of the chest, subordinates to the heart wrapping, the Xin Bao, goes down the diaphragm and passes the network of the three jiaos. The second branch follows the chest, comes out at the flank three tsun below the armpit, above pressing the lower armpit, following the inside of the bicep, walking between the tai yin and the shao yin, entering the elbow, walking between the two tendons, entering the palm center, following the middle finger, coming out at its end. The third branch leaves the center of the palm, following the finger next to the small one, that is the ring finger, to come out at its end. Most of us probably do not think much of the first branch, the one that starts at the chest center and goes through the three jaws, moving downwards. We tend to think that all the channels do that, going through the three spaces, and yet only the pericardium channel is actually said to do that, even though the others do. The heart channel, for example, is said to move down also, but it connects with the small intestine. And although the three spa it goes through the three spaces of the chest, the middle abdomen, and presumably the lower abdomen, it is not expressed as the three jowls. The lung channel, which starts in the middle jowl, is then described as moving down to reach the large intestine, that would be the lower jowl, and up to the chest and the lungs, the upper jowl obviously going through the three spaces also, but it is not stated that way and the direction is not from the chest down as it is with a heart in the pericardium. The other channels all happen to go through the three spaces, usually after they have gone through other pathways. Only the heart and the pericardium channels start the channels as moving through the three spaces first and then do the other branches begin. The heart channel is said to arise at the center of the chest of the heart, and the pericardium is said to arise at the center of the chest. It is this first branch that suggests something unique, connecting the center of the chest to the core of the body in the lower abdomen. When we stand on our legs, we keep the integrity of the torso and the spine by moving energy or consolidating upwards from the lower abdomen. We need to do this consolidation towards the center line because if we do not, the ribs will splay out, the spine will curve all over the place, we will basically sink. So when would we, we, would we be doing this consolidation action but moving not from the lower abdomen to the chest, but moving from the chest to the lower abdomen? It would seem we would do that when we stand on our hands. Granted, most people would find that a bit odd. So, of course, they did have circuses and martial artists in ancient China, and people would say, well, Avi, you're, you're into yoga and, you know, these circus type acts, um, but did people in ancient China really think that way? Um, but yes, they, I think they could have. And the question is, would they use this as a way to describe the human body that is normally going with the feet rather than with the hands on the ground? I think that the answer is yes, because when we reverse things, that is when we can find the actions of the body more clearly. Also, in Chinese medicine, we say that man communicates between heaven and earth. So while we walk on earth with our feet, very obviously, there must be some similar action with the sky, something that allows the energetics of heaven to come through us. And isn't the anatomical position of acupuncture with the hands up, as if we are walking on, or say under, heaven? The pericardium is both the heart master, the xian ju, and the heart wrapper, the bundler, the xin bao. The wrapping is what keeps things in place, as well as protects them. Another feature that is emphasized in the second branch, the one that goes down the arm, is that it is in between, jian. In the upper arm, it is said to be between the tai yin and the shao yin, and below the elbow, it is said to be between the tendons. To be between, jian, is the sun that one can see between the two leaves of a door, 
It is a crack, an opening. It mediates, or sums up, the actions of the arm, as the arm communicates with heaven. Whether you resonate with the idea of the pericardium as protecting the heart from the influences of the environment, or whether you see the pericardium as the heart master, sending out the dictates of the heart, it is a mediation process. The pericardium is basically mediating the heart to outside the heart. It is not surprising to now look at point names and see that we start with a pool of heaven, pericardium one, at the heart, and pouring down the arm, bringing the influence of heaven via pericardium two, the heavenly spring, arriving at the elbow, at pericardium three, the bent marsh, and now the heavenly influences might be coming into contact with our so-called earthly influences. So there will be conflicts, there'll be problems, like dips, as in pericardium four, shimen, the gate to the cleft, to the dip. We will need to mediate or negotiate those different influences. That's pericardium five, jian shi, the envoy, so that the influences of heaven can come into us. That would be at pericardium six, nei guan, the gate to the inner, then there will be more conflicts now that we have gone deeper. So we're going to get mounds, accumulations. That is pericardium seven, da ling, the big mound. There will be work or heat involved. This is pericardium eight, lao gong. And we will eventually come to charge the course of our lives to move seriously, which is chang. That is pericardium nine, zhang chang, the central chang, as well as Sanjia Wan, Guan Chang, the gate to the Chang. Physically, we can see that the pericardium channel is related to standing on our hands. In this case, standing on the earth with our hands. It provides the stomp from heaven, just as the kidney, bladder, and spleen channels provide the stomp from the earth. And so we see that it is the pericardium channel that is emphasized in handstanding. And you can see that pericardium one is where it pours from. This is the pool. It provides the anchor. If there was no push down and pull up opposite each other at pericardium one, this guy would basically give in to gravity and would fall. And we can see that even more clearly when it is done only with one hand because it intensifies the pressure. The same action can be done if you just press your hand against the wall in front of you and straighten the elbow, pushing the hand, spreading the hand against the wall. The pericardium act channel is the one that will be activated. Pericardium one, Tian Chuan, the heavenly pool is the pool from which heaven's influences pour down to us. So it is from our heart. Pericardium two, Tian Chuan, the spring, is where it bursts out like a fountain. We have six fountains in point names. Kidney one, Yong Chuan, starting an upward spring from the feet. Kidney five, Shui Chuan, springing forth at the ankle and continuing with the next two springs under the knee, spleen nine and gobara 34, yin and yang ling chuan, supplying an upward spring from under the knees. And then we have heart one, ji chuan, and pericardium two, tian chuan, are, which are like a fountain or a spring that comes down from heaven rather than moving up. On the left side, clinically, Pericardium one is used as one of the cardiac reflexes. Pressure pain here suggests a cardiac issue, and it can also be used to assess the success of treatment by evaluating if the pressure pain is diminishing. However, pericardium one is not one soon lateral to the nipple, as the texts suggest. Who in the right mind messes with a point that is so close to the nipple, whether it be on a man or a woman? I believe that the original idea was one unit, not necessarily one sun, the prescribed one sun, but a unit, and the unit in this case is the cup of the breast, 
And just as stomach 18 is at the root of the breast, below, pericardium 1 is meant to be at the edge of the breast, same sort of situation, the root of the breast on the lateral side, so to speak. Here is where our idea of handstanding is actually quite helpful, because we can see the energetics of pericardium 1 being more lateral, and we can see that it is really like a pool. Pericardium 3, Chudze, the bending pool, or the marsh, is another pool, another image in a stream that comes down from heaven. In Pericardium 1, we have a pool also, but this pool, Ch, is water and a wash basin. It is the kind of pool one might call a reservoir. From pericardium 1, things flow out like they would from a reservoir. In pericardium 3, we have z, which is water and the character to watch. It suggests the pool that is more like a marsh or like a swamp. The water is quite slow, even standing, allowing one to watch. It implies fertility, benefiting, feeding, a much more yin kind of pool. It is not like the pool at the head of the spring that rushes out. The character zi is used in, in another elbow point, lung 5, chi zi, suggesting that the elbow is a yin place. Its other usage is in small intestine 1, shao zi, where it might be referring to the duodenum being like a swampy pool. I take pericardium 3 between the two tendons. This is how the channel is described over and over again. If the elbow is relaxed, there is plenty of space between the tendons, and there is no reason to move medially, as modern texts suggest. Pericardium 4, Ximen, the opening door, or the crack gate. This is the metaphor of a crack through which the heavenly influences penetrate, and also the idea that something needs to give in, to soften, to cave, or to dip in that process. Clinically, this is the point of choice to induce blood circulation in the abdomen. It sends the blood to the abdomen, and it is also used for any blood disorder. However, for many types of anemia, pericardium 6 might be doing a better job, in which case I will needle pericardium 6 and do okiumoxa on pericardium 4. Physically, there is an actual cleft, a dip. It is part of the rotating capacity of the radius and the ulnar, the so-called in-between, the jian capacity of the pericardium. But it is not at the prescribed location of five tsun above the wrist, but about three fingers below pericardium three. This is the standard Japanese location for pericardium four, three fingers below pericardium three. And some practi Chinese practitioners choose that location also. On some people, one can clearly see the depression, the shi. However, on anyone, one can sl lightly slide on the skin down the arm and feel that indentation of pericardium 4, about three fingers below pericardium 3. This is the point. Pericardium 5, jian shi, the in-between messenger, is the metaphor for the conflicts that arise when the influences of heaven start to penetrate, and perhaps our will, our desire, to want to pull us in a different direction. We need to mediate the so-called dictates of heaven, which you might see as the Tao or the Dharma, and our internal individual desires. Now the influences of heaven enter at pericardium 6, nei guan, the inner gate. This is, of course, one of the big popular points in TCM. I tend to use pericardium 4, three fingers below pericardium 3, much more than pericardium 6. Both are points to be used when there is pressure pain on pericardium 8. I determine the point to needle either by its effect on the abdominal findings or its effect, um, and if the effect of both points are, is equal, I would decide by the effect of either point on releasing any area in the neck. 
In cases of anemia, regular anemia, I will use pericardium 6 over pericardium 4, as spleen 6 and pericardium 6 is the combination for anemia. With the penetration deeper of heaven, we might now encounter resistance and create mounds, accumulations. This is pericardium 7, Da Ling, the big mound. At pericardium 8, Lao Gong, the palace of labor. Labor meaning burning strength. This is the metaphor for conflict, the friction that arises when we are not in line with the influences of heaven, of nature. It is the hotness or the itchiness of the hands trying to do something to change the situation. Pericardium 8 is the diagnosis point in the pericardium channel. Based on pressure point here, one will choose the points to be needled. Pressure pain on pericardium 8 invites the use of pericardium 3 and 5, the metal and water points. No pressure pain on pericardium 8 suggests the use of either pericardium 6 or pericardium 4. I choose between these two, pericardium 6 and pericardium 4, according to which point does a better job in terms of resolving abdominal or neck reflexes. You can needle pericardium 8 if the patient really likes the pressure on it, but I generally use pericardium 4 or pericardium 6 instead. People often ask, why is it that the fire points of the kidney and pericardium are so dominant? We might use, say, the spleen channel and never check spleen too, but if I am to use the kidney channel or the pericardium channel, I will always check the fire points, kidney 2 and per pericardium 8, before deciding which points to needle. This is because these represent the activity, the restlessness in the leg and the palm. They represent the burning of our desires. We saw that in kidney 2, Ran Gu, the blazing valley, the character Gu can be seen as a shorthand for you, desire. Pericardium 8, Lao Gong, is the burning strength. It represents how strongly we are willing to fight. Kidney 2 and pericardium 8 are the only two fire points that actually have the character fire in them. No other fire point suggests by name any kind of burning, of fire, of rushing, of heat. The kidneys are our adrenals, our willpower. The pericardium is our discernment, our separating ourselves. Will we go with the flow of nature, of heaven, or will we fight it? The pericardium channel, as well as the Sanjiao channel, is largely correlated with the autonomic nervous system. How we respond to nature, to heaven, to the environment. How do we master our heart? Or how do we protect the heart? These all relate to the nervous system. People with insomnia, anxiety, depression, blood pressure disorders, etc. are all candidates for using the pericardium channel. We might call it the stress channel. And the selection of points will always depend on pressure pain on pericardium 8. How much work are we creating? How much heat? How much strength are we generating? as the nervous system is trying to adjust between the environment and our own internal um, movements. Pericardium 9, Zhang Chong, the central Chong, the charging forward, represents the resolution of this process, of the influences of nature, of heaven, being taken in so that we can charge, move seriously, that, well, that is what Chong means, we can move seriously forward with life. You might also say that it can be the starting point of it all. We charge forward strongly and then encounter resistance from the environment. We're not in concordance with nature. Interestingly, the middle finger is very important to finding the strength and the balance as anyone practicing handstands knows, and it is the palmer side of the finger that really makes the difference, not the back side, where the jing points usually are. And pericardium 9 is not in the regular jing well location, it is on the palmer side. 